गुड इवनिंग एवरी वन माई सर डॉक्टर यश हेमंत कुमार नगरिया आई एम फर्स्ट इयर रेजिडेंट फ्रॉम डी आई पाटिल हॉस्पिटल कोलहापुर आई वुड लाइक टू थैंक आई आर आई ए फॉर गिविंग मी दिस अपॉर्चुनिटी टू प्रेजेंट माई पेपर इन द ट्वेंटी फर्स्ट एम आर आई कॉन्फ्रेंस आई ऑल्सो लाइक थैंक टू थैंक माई मैंटर डॉक्टर प्रदीप पाटिल सर प्रोफेसर इन द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ रेड डायग्नोसिस एंड द प्रमोद नागोरे सर सीनियर रेजिडेंट इन द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ रेड डायग्नोसिस माई paper presentation topic is cns infection associated with hiv infection with mri correlation introduction for introduction disease of central nervous system in patient infected with the human immunodeficiency virus can result directly from hiv itself or from a variety of opportunistic agents these infection can include progressive multiple multifocal leukoencephalopathy toxoplasmosis and cryptococcus mass lesion meningoencephalitis and demyelination atrophy in vascular lesions are commonly encountered imaging findings the introduction of highly active antiretroviral therapy has improved both the clinical and the radiologic findings in the hiv patients and reduced the number of opportunistic infection first is neurotoxoplasmosis it is also known as cerebral toxoplasmosis in a is a it is an opportunistic infection caused by the parasite toxoplasma gondii It typically affects patients with the AIDS, and it is the most common cause of cerebral abscess in these patients. Epidemiology: In the most cases, the infection is asymptomatic. However, the immunocompromised patient, especially the like HIV or AIDS infection, can be step become established. The infection likely to occur once the CD4 count is less than 200 cells per mm. Pathologic features: The mac macroscopic appearance of CNS toxoplasmosis is, is in this type of patients this poorly circumscribed necrotizing abscess with hypermic border with and soft yellow content microscopic features include coagulative necrosis encysted toxo organisms numerous tachyzoids and minimum in post inflammatory response patient generally came with a complaint of global encephalopathy such as headache confusion lethargy mild hemi hemiparesis is the most common focal abnormality poria is rare in this type of patients now the mri feature on t1 weighted imaging it is a typically iso intense or hypo intense occasionally shows mild peripheral hyper intensity due to coagulative necrosis on t2 weighted imaging intensity is variable from hyper intense to iso intense on hyper hyper intense re generally representing the necrotizing encephalitis iso intense represent the organic organizing abscess concentrate concentric alternating zone of hypo hyper and iso intense signals generally known as concentric target sign lesions are generally surrounded by the perilesional edema on t1 contrast lesions often demonstrate the ring enhancement or the nodular enhancement uh, for this pathology it is also typically eccentric target sign or the on post contrast images here is the first case uh, the 42 year male patient known case of hiv HIV came with a complaint of headache, confusion, and hemiparesis. There are three images. On the first, axial T1 weighted images shows the area of hyper intense lesion in the basal ganglia region and the left caudate nucleus, left caudate nucleus, and the internal capsule. On axial T2 weighted MRI image, there is a concentric alternating zone of hypo, hyper, or iso intense, known as concentric ring sign, surrounding by by edema. On axial T1, post contrast shows the perilesional edema, ring enhancement. Perilesional ring enhancement. In the second second case of a known case of toxoplasmosis in a 20 year old patient with HIV infection, on axial T2 weighted T2 images demonstrate the involving the right basal ganglia that is iso intense to hyper intense relative to gray matter. Lesion is surrounded by the high signal intensity, that is vasogenic edema. The smaller lesions are also present in the left basal ganglia. On axial post contrast, you know, multiple enhancing lesions is seen. CNS cryptococcus. It results from the infection of the CNS with the yeast-like fungus known as cryptococcus pneumoniae. It is the most common fungal infection and the third third most common opportunistic infection of the central nervous system. pathology there are three dominant cns forms to the disease depending on which part of the brain is affected first the meninges then it causes meningitis if it affect the brain parenchyma that is known as cryptococcus peri 
perivascular species known as gelatinous pseudocyst. Meningitis and cryptococcus are seen in the immunocompetent host usually and gelatinous pseudocyst which are more common in the patient with HIV or AIDS. The most common site for the cryptococcus are the basal ganglia, thalamus and the cerebellum. The MRI features of included and dilated perivascular space can coalesce into gelatinous pseudocysts that tend to give soap bubble appearance. On T1, it shows the hypo-intense lesion. On T2, it is hyper-intense lesion follows a CSF signal intensity. On flare, there are variable signal ranging from full suppression to persistent high signal. Cryptococcus appears low signal on the T1 and on high signal on the T2 and the flare images. On T1 contrast, the variable ranging from no enhancement to peripheral nodular enhancement. Here is a case of 43 year old male came with a complaint of fever, malaise, headache, and is also on the heart therapy since one month. On axial T1 rated image, there is areas of the hypo intensities on the bilateral basal ganglia uh, and internal capsule. On the axial T2 rated images, we can see the hyper intensity lesion coalesces to form the soap, giving the soap bubble appearance on the region of the basal ganglia or the caudate nucleus of bilateral. On flare area, there are shows of variable signs of variable areas of hyper intensities. Here is another case of 25-year-old HIV patient who presented with the increasing headache, nausea, and vomiting. On T1 weighted axial image, there is a cerebellar uh, right-sided cerebellar hemisphere shows the hypo-intense lesion. On T2 weighted image, we can see the hyper-intense lesion, which is surrounded by the perilesional edema. On T1 post contrast, it shows the peripheral ring enhancement is seen. Next is progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy. leukoencephalopathy. It is a demyelinating disease which results from the reactivation of the JC virus infecting the oligodendrocyte in patient with compromised immune system. Classically, PML occurred in the patient with the AIDS, typically developing patient with the CD4 count level of 50 to 100 cells per microliter. Histology reveals the demyelinating plaques involving the white matter and the subcortical U fibers. Other findings included all infected oligodendrocytes with enlarged amphiphilic nuclei located at the periphery of the lesion. Clinical presentation and site, the lesion tends to have confluent bilateral but asymmetrical supratentorial white matter and thalamic involvement. However, the basal ganglia, brain stem, and cerebellum can also be involved. Subcortical, frontal, and the parieto occipital regions are the common location. The most frequently encountered symptoms include the altered mental status, motor deficits, limb and gait ataxia, visual symptoms such as diplopia, hemianopia, seizures, as PML involve the gray matter in the later stages. MRI feature is generally seen are uh, multifocal, asymmetric, periventricular, and subcortical involvement. There is a little or no mass effect or the enhancement and the subcortical U5 are commonly involved. On T1 weighted image, region, involved regions usually are hypo-intense. On T2, regions are generally hyper-intense. Multiple punctate high T2 signal region surrounding the main area gives the Milky Way sign. Barbell sign, parieto occipital signal abnormally crossing the splenium. On T1 contrast imaging, there is no enhancement. On DWI or ADC, peripheral patchy diffusion restriction seen in D DWI at the leading edge. Here is a case of 34-year-old male patient came with a complaint of diplopia, ataxia, altered mental status, and known case of HIV positive. On the axial T1, T2 weighted image, we can see the hyperintense lesion, hyperintense lesion in the subcortical fibers uh, crossing the splenium shows barbell sign. Uh, on similar to on flare imaging, it shows the hyperintense lesion in the same area and it shows on the T2 weighted images. On DWI, we can also see the diffuse restrict, somewhat diffuse restriction in the same area, but not proper diffuse restriction. Here is another case of a PML in a 30-year-old woman with HIV infection. On axial T2 images, we can see the hyperintensity involving the white matter on the right hemisphere including the subcortical U fibers. On the same axial post-contrast T1 image demonstrate the hypo-intensity and there is no evidence of associated enhancement. 
Conclusion, the neuroimaging finding of sinus infection disease in a patient with HIV infection are varied, including the mass lesion, atrophy, demyelination, vascular complication, and meningoencephalitis. Heart therapy has led to the improvement of the many patient, uh, many of the imaging findings, but it can occasionally result in IRS, which has atypical imaging findings. Knowledge of the imaging finding of the infectious sinus disease in HIV infected patient, as well as impact of heart, is important in the patient treatment. These are my other references. Thank you.